How's it going? We're going to talk about this drum set right here because drummers love gear and because there are a few ideas on here you might want to steal and use for your kit. Now if you've seen any of my stuff before you know that I don't like to carry around extra stands. I'm, I don't have a roadie and I hate carrying around hardware uh, because it's heavy and sometimes unnecessary etc. So a lot of that went into planning this kit. It's just a five piece kit. But one of the things I love about it is that there's so many sounds inside this kit with so little hardware and that's uh, to me that's a great combination. Also, this is a PDP uh, sort of, uh, what, what the heck was it called? That's right, a Platinum Series, all maple shell. This was something they did for an anniversary edition or something like that. And I talked to a guy at Guitar Center and he basically said that these are DW uh, shells, <laughs> just not with the the top hardware that they have but they're really good shells and this is one of the best sounding kits I've ever had and I also think it's a really good looking kit it's kind of a uh, Ringo on steroids as far as the the black onyx whatever is is concerned and uh, he did have a five-piece kit later on but the four-piece kit is kind of his size is just a little deeper and it's and it's a lot of fun um, so what I want to show you is that even though this is only a five-piece kit. There are a lot of sounds in here that you can take advantage of as well with your kit and not necessarily add a whole lot of money. I like to have every part of the kit perform like double duty, so to speak. So here's what I got going. We'll go from left to right, right over here, okay? Firstly, the hi-hat. Obviously, it holds the hi-hats themselves, which you can use for a variety of sounds, both playing with them, chicking with them, flashing with them, all that kind of stuff. But with this little Tama mount that is made to clamp onto the pull rod, you can mount a little splash symbol on there, which is very handy. <laughs> and um, you don't have to carry around a whole stand for a six inch splash. Also on my hi-hat, I have these two little pieces of percussion you can see this one is blue. It is the LP Jam Block, and it sounds a bit like a wood block on steroids again. Those things can cut. And because I had the tambourine mounted here, you'll notice that when you hit the Jam Block, it also sets off the tambourine. I'll often use the Jam Block as a sort of a, a step up to a cross stick sound. I'll be playing something like... And if I need to go to like a course or something, but not quite a snare, I'll go. Right. And again, because I'm hitting a cross stick kind of sound on a wood block with the tambourine, I get an extra sound out of it. But of course, I also have the tambourine that you can play uh, separately. It is a drum set mounted tambourine. That is, it has a mount so you can play it on a mounted onto a drum set, but also this rubber ring so you can hit it and you're not going to break it. So you can do one of these things. Right. But also this one is specially made. You just pop it right out of there really easily. This is made from pearl, by the way. So you can use it and then put it down and play it again. So that's really nice. So the hi-hat has essentially four standard sounds in it. The hi-hat itself, the splash, the block, the block with the tambourine, and the tambourine, which you can also pull off and use as a tambourine. That is great, and it's all in this one thing, and that's done. Now, the snare drum, you think it's just a snare drum, but oh no. I don't have it here right now, but I have a little clamp that comes out of the snare drum stand and holds my phone, holds my iPhone, which often has set lists on it and uh, sometimes metronome stuff and it's all right there. Of course, it also holds the snare. This snare happens to be a Mapex five and a half um, hand hammered steel. It's awesome. And I put something on it. I actually drilled the holes a little bit bigger, I know. But I drilled uh, into this so that I could mount to the side something I think every drummer should put on every snare they own. It's made by DW and it's called a three position butt plate. And basically what it does is it adds two standard sounds to your snare. I mean, we already have a few sounds in it, right? We have the snare sound. You got your, 
your cross stick sound. You got a gawk or a, a rim shot, you know, all that. And you also have the timbali sound when you take the snares off. Right? Fine. And that's great. And of course, you can play all around in the heads and come up with other sounds too. But those are kind of the standard sounds that come with your snare and you can extrapolate from there. But the three position butt plate gives you two more standard sounds, so to speak. When you move the little knob towards you, just like that, quick little shift, it drops the snares down just a little so that you can, they're still just barely touching the head. Let's see if you can tell the difference. You can't hear, in fact, I'll, I'll exaggerate a little bit just for effect. You can hear it really rattling. And then if you put it towards the middle, it just kind of puts it up like a regular snare. And I like to use that loose sound for like train beats and fat country stuff. But then if you move it from the middle to the top, again, with just a chick, it gets a little bit more of a, hear that? It more of almost like a, a muffled 70s dance sound. Flat, just that's what it is. Now, of course, you still have your knob, you still have your, 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 your strainer knob here that you can adjust and all that stuff. But it's just great to be able to beforehand go. Okay, that's my standard sound set in the middle. And this is gonna be my loose one. Hear that? And then my tight one. And you can just click it in between and have all those sounds available to you right here. And of course this, I can't remember what these are called. These are great. They're just little rubber uh, um, grips really that have a little bit of padding on there. So this is what this snare sounds like without this on it. Very pangy, right? Which is fine. I like a, pang, a bit of pang sometimes. But you can also put um, moon gel and those rings on it and stuff like that. Uh, here's what I don't like about the moon gel. Uh, the moon gel often collects dust and gunk on it and then it won't stick anymore. And it sometimes leaves a residue. So if you're doing uh, brush work, you can kind of get stuck on there, especially if you don't use moon gel and you use duct tape. You take that duct tape off, you kind of have residue which gets stuck on brushes as well. The rims, the rings, I don't mind the rings, but sometimes they kill too much of the pang. And if you end up using brushes with them, they can get in the way. And I have often like gone like this and, and that, that ring is popped up and then it gets caught and wing and I've just tossed that thing across the room. But these do not break. They're just made of kind of a rubber thing and they just clamp on, simple as you please like that. And to me, that's a good amount. It's got a little bit of ring, but it doesn't kill it dead the way other ones do. And of course, it collects no dirt. It leaves no resi or residue and you can just pack it up that way. You just throw it in your case just like that and it'll stay on to your next one. Um, really good, I like that. So a lot of stuff there just in the snare. Now this tom is pretty much just a tom, but it's on one stand with my 16 inch medium crash Avita Zildjian. By the way, just for kicks, I should tell you, as shiny as these may seem to you, I have literally never, ever cleaned them. And I've owned that symbol for 20 years. I'm a very firm believer in symbols gaining a little bit more character and things over time, even with like grabbing it and your oils and dust and smoke and bars. I played in bars for 10 years with these things and they still look like this. I've literally never cleaned these and I never will. I don't care. So anyway, <laughs> um, but this one stand holds these two items. Now what's nice about this is if I feel like well, I don't really need a five-piece kit tonight. I, I can get it by with the Ringo set just fine. Then I don't even bring this in. And I have everything I need right here because there are no more stands. Now, obviously, you kind of have to have a hi-hat stand. You kind of have to have a snare stand, which, of course, holds my snare with my extra sounds in it. And you have to have a throne. But everything else is hooked to various drums over here. You're going to hate this, but I love it. Uh, this bass drum was virgin when I bought it. This is, kit was bought used. And I drilled all manner of holes in it. I did. And what I put on there is a, uh, a rail mount, which I have a separate video on rail mounts. And uh, maybe it'll be in the, in, the, in the description there. And so the rail mount holds my 12 inch by 10 inch tom. And by the way, the toms have Evans level 360 G114s on them. On the bottoms, they have black resonance. I use Aquarian Super Kit 2s for the bass drum and Aquarian Studio X's on the top. In fact, something else I did to the snare, which you might want to do, especially if you buy a used snare, 
Aquarian sells a pack. Other companies might sell it too, but Aquarian sells a pack that is called like a snare tune-up kit. And it's really inexpensive for everything you get with it. And what you get is an Aquarian Studio X head, which I don't know if you can tell, there you go, has one of those rims, uh, rings on the inside. Comes with that. It also comes with an Aquarian Classic Clear snare side. It also comes with these uh, strips that you put underneath, strips that you put underneath your, uh, your snares, so that the snares don't end up popping little holes in the side of your head. They also kill just a little bit of overtone down there, and they also give you another ring that you can use on the top, which I'm using with a separate snare drum right now. And you can totally turn a U snare into something that is awesome. This snare was used, by the way. Isn't that freaking gorgeous? <laughs> I love that snare. And it goes really well with this kit. Again, a uh, five and a half by 14 hand hammered steel Mapex snare. Now to get back to the bass drum, the bass drum is a 22 by 18. It looks a little deeper because of the rims are a little wide. And again, I drilled some holes and did the, the rail mount, the DW rail mount, by the way, for the 12-inch uh, tom. I also put another Gibraltar arm on it to hold my crash cymbal. So normally on the bass drum, I put a clamp on the hoop to hold the cowbell. But I have actually broken a hoop before. <laughs> I've gotten a little bit excited, hit the cowbell, and actually cracked the hoop, which is not fun. So what I decided to do was do something that, again, with my sort of hyper-efficiency mode, I actually drilled, because I was drilling anyway, I drilled into, my, drilled into my bass drum there, a place to put this little clamp right here. This is actually a tom mount from another drum. And what I do is I hook my cowbell to that, and of course it holds it very securely. And with these longer cowbells, like this Ridge Rider, I can back it off a little bit and have it where I where it seems comfortable for me to hit it rather than have the thing out here. I don't know, I just don't really like it there. But what also I can do is uh, I use the, the cowbell mainly for like country and rock gigs. But when I'm singing, cause I'm kind of a bit of a singing drummer, maybe a yelling drummer, I take that cowbell off and I put this on there. This is a little clamp from Tama that holds extra hi-hats, they call it, you call it an X-hat. What I end up doing is I just take this off or maybe I don't use this at all for that night because uh, I'm just not, not feeling the cowbell that night or I know I'm going to be singing for that set and because uh, I don't sing all the time. And there it is. It's that quick to just change it out. And so what I like about the, this is that when I'm playing uh, and I have a microphone that comes around on a gooseneck to like right here, I don't have to cross my hands in front of the mic. Do you know what I mean? Over here, I can just... By the way, you can just turn that and tighten it. Tighten it again. It's that quick. And it's great to be able to play, essentially, with a microphone coming at me like this. I play with the microphone like that rather than crossing in front of it. And it's, and it's a lot of fun to have a little hi-hat right here with the ride cymbal. Fun to, fun to have it there. But if I don't want it there, it's about that easy to take it off. There you go. And put the cowbell right back. And again, I'm not clamping it to the rim, not cracking the, uh, the hoop at all. But basically, uh, together with the double bass pedal here, basically this bass drum does like five things. A bass drum, obviously, a double bass drum, a cowbell or hi-hat holds the tom and a cymbal. That's really cool. I hate carrying extra stuff. By the way, there's another little clamp right here from Tana that actually holds the Iron Cobra bass drum pedal and Iron Cobra hi-hat stand together to keep your Iron Cobra pedal from creeping. Uh, again, if you've got a double bass drum pedal that's an Iron Cobra, this thing is made for it, it's not expensive, and it's just wonderful. Holds everything in place, really locks it down. You may be able to uh, use this with other pedals because often pedals have extra holes drilled into them and you might be able to utilize them. 
Now for sort of the right side of the kit, the floor tom, this is a 16 by 14 inch floor tom, and it holds, it does four things. <laughs> Obviously it's a floor tom itself, but it also holds that the arm is clamped to the far left leg that is the cymbal arm to hold my ride cymbal. This one here is a custom made projection ride. The other arm clamps to the other leg and holds my China Boy, which is a Wuhan, 18 inch Wuhan. And on top of the Wuhan is a little extender, I think they call them cymbal extenders actually, it just screws right down onto it. And it's, hold, and it's holding something called a crasher. It's, uh, it's kind of a cool extra sound to have to do uh, just just taking a chorus to another level kind of thing. Just, you can also use it for all that kind of stuff. But um, anyway, so this 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 floor tom is four things: the floor tom, the ride, the crash, and an effect. No stands; it's all attached to it. And nicely, the actual little arms, the clamps that are attached to the legs that hold the cymbal arms also act as memory locks. They are underneath the tom mount, so when you slide the leg up, it just goes shunk right there where it needs to be. And actually, that is also the height and angle, etc., of the floor tom. And there you go. The one on the front has its own little memory lock, and that's how you can tell where the legs go. Sometimes, because people don't like to mark up their legs or put stickers on them, they're not sure which legs go where, and they're trying them out and whatever. The one that doesn't have a clamp on it, that only has a little memory lock, that's the one that's facing you. And I have two different clamps and I know which one is for each. And of course, the uh, cymbal arms have memory locks on them so that you just slide them in, they're right there. I can set this kit up crazy quick and, and it's got so much potential for so many different songs, it's great. The, the percussion you can use in your hands, the, the, the jam block, the splash, the hi-hat, the one crash, the tom, the other tom, the four tom, the other crash, the ride cymbal, the china boy, the effect, the bass drum, the cowbell, the snare with all the different sounds, and one extra stand. When I say extra, I mean other than your throne, hi-hat, and snare. One stand right there. And if I don't use that tom, if I want just a four-piece kit, there are no extra stands. It's all, all this junk is hooked to these two drums, which I'm gonna bring anyway. I have an entire kit with drum lights in them, but I usually put a drum light in the bass drum of any drum set that I'm using so that I can highlight, literally, the name of the band and also have some kind of visual interest for the drummer because too many times the drummer is uh, they're shoved in the back of the room and, you know, black, thick black curtains and maybe they got a black t-shirt on and it just disappears. Well, not, not with that bass drum. But what I also do, so the bass drum does another thing, it advertises the band. What it also does, though, is in conjunction with the throne. Yes, in my hyper-efficiency mode, even the throne does stuff, extra stuff. Obviously, it holds you. But this one does so much more than that. Forgive the angle here. I know you love staring at my butt, but uh, here's the situation. You can see that this is a Gibraltar. There it is, Gibraltar. At least the top part is. I believe this is called a works throne or a workstation, something like that. Workshop, work seat. And the bottom is, is a Tama. Uh, these kind of fit with a lot of different legs. So this one works for, for, for the Tama pretty well. But it has Velcro, as you can see, sewn into the side. And then Gibraltar sells all manner of extra little accoutrements that hook to the Velcro. So what this throne does, this right here, I put some Velcro on the back of the remote that controls the light in that bass drum. So what happens with this is I can turn it on or off just from here. In fact, what I do is I sort of have it aimed down and the remote itself is this right here. On the bottom of the drum is the pack that is the power pack of the light. You plug it in, there's a, there's a plug, and it also acts as the remote. So this is right here, the remote is aimed down here, and all I do is go, and this, this picks it up and it turns the light on. As you can see, you can obviously change colors, you can also change, here, that. 
So as you can see, you can change colors, like 15, 16 different colors, and uh, you can change the speed, you can change the brightness, you can change it to strobing or flashing or kind of a smooth move in between each color, and of course, shut it off entirely. And all right here, from your throne, attached to the side. Now here's another one, I love this one. This one holds sticks. Now what I have here are some of those old, I love these sticks. These are called three drumsticks. They were made, I believe, by DW. There you go. And they sell them in packs of three. Because when you break one, <laughs> you always want to have another one. And they actually have markings on there to tell them exactly how they weigh and everything. But anyway, it holds your sticks right there. And I put it on my left side. You don't have to put it there, obviously. But so when you got two sticks and you're playing, you got some over here, and then you break a stick or drop it, ah, there it is. I mean, it's that quick. It's like pulling a gun. So it's just like, you just pull out your gun and, and do your thing. Now I'll spin around here and show you on this side. I took a rather fat drum key and put a little piece of Velcro on it. Look at that. Got a drum key pretty much handy whenever I want. There you go. Also, uh, this is a uh, this holds a drum towel, which they also sell. But if you're ever getting super sweaty and you just grab a towel and you know wipe off your hands or your face, you just hang it right here. This is a drink holder, little bottle, Aquafina, Coke cans, whatever. Lots of stuff in there. It's really deep. I've never had a drink fall out. And again, a drink is right here. So you're sitting here. Imagine you're, you know, this is your drum set in front of you. Oh, geez, there's my stick. Oh, here's my drink. You don't mix them up. <laughs> and. Uh, you got your remote right here, and you got your key right here, and everything's right here. But one thing more on the bottom of the throne. Do you see that bag? That is a climber's chalk bag. You know when you're climbing on a rock and you put that stuff on your hands? Sometimes, and I'm especially doing outdoor gigs, and it's just really hot, I just reach down and shove my hand in there and get some chalk on it, go like that. I am nice and tacky for the rest of the time. So this throne holds a ludicrous amount of stuff. It holds the chalk, it holds the drink, it holds the towel, it holds the key, it holds the remote, it holds the sticks, and it holds me. By the way, I should point out that this little drum rug is called a Black Widow Drum Web, and I think that is the site as well, Black Widow Drum Web. And basically, it's just a round portion where you put your throne so your own weight holds it in place a little bit. Then it spreads out a bit like a web on this side with Velcro that is already attached in strips uh, along the sides for your pedals. They also give you these little um, strips of Velcro so you can kind of mark where you want your pedals to be. And of course, you can put Velcro on the bottom of your pedals. So you just go shunk and put it right in there and they are hooked to the, uh, the drum web. And of course, then your weight holds it down. And what's really nice is, this is not a very heavy rug at all. It is really solid, it's like canvas, but it's not one of those thick rugs that you have to roll up and have it, you know, have separately. This thing actually flops inward like this and then rolls up into that bit of a circle right there. And that circle fits in my cymbal bag. Isn't it great to have a drum rug that does all of this stuff, looks cool, and fits in your uh, cymbal bag so it's not like, again, a totally separate rug that you're carrying around. So I hope that gave us some cool ideas about maybe how to add some new sounds to your kit without adding a whole bunch of stands or maybe uh, how to eliminate some stands so you don't have to haul so much stuff around. One thing I wanted to add, I, ooh, look at that. Reach back and grab the key. This little mount has a drum key on it so that you can actually control the height of where it is on your on your rod. But also, I'll remove that sometimes entirely and put the drum key back right on the chair like that. And so um, I can drop a little tambourine thing on here if I really want to make the tambourines echo. I also have a little maraca set that sits right there so I can add a little sizzle to it if I want to. But also, this is super handy to be able to uh, sort of, you know, add extra fun and sounds. right there and it's very easy to handle and then you just drop it on and you have it back. So anyway, just a lot of cool stuff, a lot of fun ways to uh, make it even easier for you. But there's one thing now that you've stuck around that I want that I want to show you. Hope you can see it from, uh, from there. One, two, three of the symbol holders that I have are of this type. 
This one is different because I have to clamp this down a little bit more and of course hold this on there. But these are from Gibraltar and these are from Tama. Now, I don't mind the Tama ones. In fact, these are really pretty cool. You can see they have little red um, tabs on the side and you just pinch them and they come off just like that. And that's really nice. And then you can take your simple off, put it back down there, you just pinch it. You don't even really have to twist and turn and all that. But you might have noticed the felt is attached to them. That is not an accident, nor does it come that way. I glue, super glue, felts to these things. Be very careful you don't get it in the threads, by the way, so that you don't lose it when you take it off. In fact, this is also glued. So this stuff does not fall off. Might, you might be like, oh man, the felt doesn't rotate and allow for ease. <laughs> Come on. Anyway, so that's how easy it is to put stuff off and on. And if you've, you know, if you've ever done it the other way, where you're sitting here, you know, and you're talking with someone at the end of the night and doing your, and you undo it, and then you go, oh, 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 oh and it's black and it rolls across the floor, and, uh, and then you can't find it, and you take your symbol off, so you throw this in your bag without it, and then you come back and find out, oh, the felt thing came off in the bag, where the, nope, I don't deal with any of that crap, but not only because of gluing felt but because I use these Gibraltar spring-loaded cymbal mounts. Let me show you how they work. You can see it looks like a little cross T at first, but what you do, because there's a spring mount underneath, is push it down just a little so that you can make it go vertical, and there you go, comes right off. And that's what it looks like. It has a little spring-loaded uh, mount in there that holds the other phone, blah, 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 screws on. I think they have a couple different kinds to screw on different uh, kinds of threads. You have to check with them. But anyway, then you put your symbol on, or or if you're taking your symbol off for the night, you put your your, uh, your 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 felt back on and push it down, and there you go. And it holds it in place. And then to put the symbol on, you do this again, and there you go. And you can see why it's so quick and easy for me to set up this kit, and you know a, a minimum amount of fuss with little things like that. You know, when, you're, when you have a lot of symbols, to not have to sit here and go like this for each symbol, it saves some time. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that video. I hope I gave you some ideas to add some sounds and save some weight. And if you like this, please like and subscribe to my page for more stuff like this.